Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I am using the Framed Anemone uh, stamp set and then it's matching dies. Later on um, I'm also going to bring in the Mr. and Mrs. stamps and dies. Um, I actually was making this card. Well, first of all, the image is beautiful. It's drawn by uh, my friend Emily Midget for Honeybee Stamps and her floral images are always amazing. Um, if you have not been over to the shop recently, they actually also um, uh, just had their Autumn Splendor release. So all of their fall stuff, which is so super cute. Um, but I am using the No Line ink actually from Honeybee. Um, this is one of my first times getting a chance to use it. And I am stamping on watercolor paper. My preferred is the... Um, Hold on, I'll remember the name of it. The me, 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 what is it? It's the Montevall, but I can't remember like the actual brand name. Pregnancy brain is a real thing, y'all. Like it's a real, real thing. What is the name of this watercolor paper? It'll be linked below. <laughs> All right, I paused it to look it up, which normally I wouldn't do, but my video was already being hinky. It's Canson. <laughs> How hard is that to remember? It's Canson watercolor aquarelle um, that the Montevall paper. That's the one that I typically buy and have good luck with. So back to the actual card making. Um, I also stamped my image two times. It was kind of difficult to get a good impression because watercolor paper is a little bit more textured. Um, so I did stamp it twice and then the watercolors that I'm using are Daniel Smith. You don't have to use Daniel Smith. I just like the way they blend um, on this particular paper. I'm not a watercolorist by trade. So it's really something that I just play around with every once in a while. And these are the ones that I have. So this is what I use. Um, just like there are some other times where like I'm traveling and it's easier to use different ones because I'm traveling and so I use those. There's a lot of good ones out there. Use just whatever you have. Um, as far as technique goes, we're going to start off where we're um, at regular speed, you know, and I'll show you how I do it at regular speed, but then we're eventually going to have to speed it up because this whole card is watercolored and that's why the video <laughs> is so long because I hate taking apart like any of it out because I don't know what it is that you're looking to see. You know, you could be, you could own the set at home and be looking for a specific area in which um, you want help with how it should look. And then I've cut that part out. So I don't like to do that, but I do have to speed it up because watercolor takes a long time. Specifically for me, it takes a long time <laughs> because it's not what I do by trade. I'm more Copics and then I'm faster with those. So anywho, my technique for a super clean watercolor look is I like to go in with the pigment. I put it down where I want it to be the darkest. I rinse off my brush. I pick up clean water and then I dab off the base of my bristles onto a napkin, paper towel, whatever. Um, and that's why you you can't see my paper towel on screen, but you can see me like bringing my brush over. That's what I'm doing. I'm just dabbing the bristle so that it's not too wet. And then I'm coming out and starting at the edge of whatever section I'm in, um, putting down the water and then taking it to the pigment and kind of pulling it back out. When I want it to be darker, I just go back in um, and drop in more pigment. If it has dried already because I'm using such minimal water, I just re-wet it so I can drop my pigment in. Um, this card ended up being, like after I did it the first time, it was just too light. I didn't like how light it was. So I ended up going over it again, which is pretty common in watercoloring as far as building up layers of color and how you want them to look. Um, so don't be surprised if it does take you a little bit of time, especially if you're just learning for people who do it more often. Um, I think it's just a comfort level. Like they're more comfortable and they don't have to be, they don't fidget as much with the things. I'm a little bit of a fidgeter, but for the flowers, the main two colors I used were Cordacridone, a rose 
and quinacridone violet. Um, I also did put in a little bit of blue toward on the second layer. And then what was that? Is it cobalt? My blue might be cobalt blue or Prussian. I'll look again. It'll be linked below. Um, and so we're just going to go through and um, if there's anywhere that you have like a specific question or whatever, like please let me know in the comments below and I will uh, try my best to answer that. Um, don't be discouraged with no line watercoloring or no line coloring in general. It can get a bit blobby um, or feel like it gets a bit blobby, which can be a bit discouraging because then you feel like, well, I have no idea what I'm doing and it looks like this and I'm just going to give up push through that push through the blobbiness um because if you keep working it and eventually when it's dry you'll see at the end of each flower like we go back in and put in like kind of the details back in um it really takes the blobbiness away and makes it a beautiful image also if you're a person who likes a looser watercolor look which i do <laughs> i do like a looser watercolor look um, but somehow I always end up with like these super tight designs because I also like a really clean look. So sometimes it's just hard for me to, to combine the two. Um, especially if I'm using a specific no line ink, if you stamp in like a distress ink, um, like an antique linen where it's also water soluble and the line disappears, you, it's much easier to get a looser look. So maybe the next time I watercolor, you know, in two months or six months or whatever, because I don't stick with it um, pretty consistently. I don't stick with it. Though I guess maybe I'm more open to it in the fall months. I don't really know why. Um, I will try to remember to, to do that so I can do a looser look because my last few have been pretty clean. Um, but this card is for my friend Angie. I've worked with Angie for years. Um, I, when she first got you know, like hired as a dispatcher, she got hired as a part-timer. I actually trained her, um, which I had no idea why they even let me train anybody because I had only been a dispatcher for like two years. <laughs> like I had no clue what I was doing. That's not entirely true. I'm sure I had more of a clue that I felt like I did, but you know, two years experience dispatcher versus you know, 17 years experience dispatcher. I feel like I know so much more now than I did back then. Um, but anyhow, she's always been wonderful. She's always been just like the sweetest person ever. And um, I've never met anybody who was like, that Angela, I don't like her. I'm it literally, I have never met a single person who did not like her because she's just such a good, warm, kind human being. Um, but she, so obviously she got hired when I was like in my second year. So we've been together a long time. We have been together a super long time. Um, and then she, uh, at the time when she got hired, she was just part time. And then she worked at a uh, neurologist's office. That was her full time job. And eventually she got on a department, not ours, but another department full time. But she stayed at ours part time. Um, because nobody can ever leave that department. I don't really know why. <laughs> I don't really know why. She's still there. Um, and I'm still sometimes considering going back part-time. Like, we just can't leave. I don't... I guess that says something about that particular department that everybody keeps going back. I, I don't really know. Um, so she still works with my husband. And I see her all the time. But then she and I, she works part-time at that department. And she is the one who talked me into coming to my current department full-time. So I also work with her full time at this department. Just now she has seniority over me because she got hired first. Um, but over the years that we have been together, okay? And you know this, if you have a, a friend, um, a girlfriend that you have been friends with for a super, super long time, we have been through a lot of relationships together. Different people that we have dated, different life scenarios. And so... When I had met Ange, <laughs> you just, you ever have a friend who just, their picker's broken? Like, they just have a bad picker. It doesn't matter who they end up in a relationship with. They're just not, like, 
it's just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. They don't end up in relationships with people who are very good to them. Um, which is wild because Angie is so nice and sweet. So she, but she's got a bad picker. Her picker is broken. Um, so when she first started working there, um, she had two boys. She still has two boys who are very sweet. And they're super into hockey. Both, both of her boys played hockey, um, which is a very expensive sport. And she was divorced um, from their father who decided he was going to have some extra marital entertainment while she was pregnant with her second son. So there's the, the boo-boo pick number one. Um, oh, here we're back to the, we got to talk about the garden. We're back to the detail layers. So now everything is dry. Okay. We've done two layers of color on this and I'm much happier with the depth of color that I have. I'm going back in with the rose which is pretty concentrated. I'm using really minimal water. And then I'm just adding in the details that are already there. These were already put in there by Emily. For some of them, I wanted to go back in and kind of soften them out because it was a section of the petal that would have been darker kind of all over. And so I just really use minimal, minimal water to go in and soften those edges. And then for the center, um, I am doing, is it lemon yellow? I think it is. Um, a, a bright yellow. And then I'm adding in some gold and some brown um, and just kind of moving that around and leaving it to dry while I move on to my next flower. Um, we're going to go back and add in the details, but with watercolor, you have to be so patient which is probably why I don't do it a lot because I'm not very patient. Um, you you have to be so patient because in order to add the next layer, it has to be dry. You can't go in there while it's still wet, just like you can't work in two areas that are, are wet next to each other because they'll run together and just make this mushy, muddy mess and we can't have that. So you just have to be patient. Um, and maybe that is why I do less of the loose watercolor because... With this clean look, I use such minimal water that it's usually dry by the time I want to go back and do the next thing and so I don't have to worry about it. That might be the allure there, honestly. Um, but yeah, so, okay. So that was the first bad pick. When she got hired, she was living, um, she, well, no, she was, yeah, she was living with this guy. And they had been dating for quite a few years, but he was just like not super good to her, not super good to her kids. And she ended up, like, having to flee in the middle of the night with all of her items um, just so, like, it wouldn't be a thing. And she had to leave her dog behind and it was super, <laughs> it was super sad. But then she was, like, in her own apartment and on her, like, on her own two feet. We weren't dating anybody. There was quite a bit of time in between. And then she started dating this other guy. What are we going to call him? Um, hmm... Derek. We'll call him Derek. And so then she started dating Derek and he had kids that were a similar age to her own kids. Um, and he was a very nice guy and he was very good to her. His problem was that he was just not super cleanly. Like she went over, <laughs> like she would go to his house and there would be no toilet paper. Like where's the where is the toilet paper? Even like the cheapest place I ever worked at had like that notebook style toilet paper that nobody wants to use, but they didn't have no toilet paper. Um, back to the card. So here I was putting in the detail parts and I didn't really like it. I kind of got a little heavy handed. And so I just went back in with a little bit of water and went over the whole area um, and just kind of like wiped them out. Watercolor is pretty forgiving when it comes to that. Uh, that if you don't like what you've done or if you've put down too much pigment, you can totally blot it up um, and just kind of give yourself a little bit of a blank canvas. That part of watercolor is totally wonderful. I debated on whether or not to leave this flower in just because it's kind of showing you what I have already showed you in the flower up above. Um, but I told you I had this fear of leaving something out and like that's the part I wanted to see, Kelly. So I leave it in and I have these extremely long videos. So I apologize. Um, so yeah, he wasn't super cleanly. There were some issues. 
I'm pretty sure with the mother of his children that he was still like very much involved in her life. And I don't mean like, because me and my ex are um, pretty good at co-parenting. Like we, last week, Nathan's school started, we took him together to um, open house. We take him together trick or treating. We have had his birthday party together. Like things that we do for our son. Um, but I don't do for him as far as like things that don't involve my child. Not that, I mean, if he asked me, I guess I probably would, but he's not like, he's not my person anymore. Do you know what I mean? Um, he's not my go-to person. So if I need something, I'm not going to call him. I'm going to call Eric. Like Eric is my person now. You know, he's my, he's my go-to. He's my, my ride or die. My ex-husband, not, I don't need, I don't need anything from him. Um, so anyway, he was quite involved with his ex as well. And not in a way like that was for their kids. Like she was still using him as her person, if that makes sense. So that one was out. Then after that, we started dating another one. Who was he? Oh, we'll call him Brad. Um, and he, she was dating him when her apartment burned down. If you guys have been in the craft world for uh, quite some time, then you may remember that years and years ago, it's been years now, I had done a um, fundraiser like craft drive for a friend of mine whose apartment burned down. The apartment below her actually caught fire. Um, and there was so much smoke and water damage from the fire department that there was nothing in the apartment that was salvageable. That was this, my same friend. Now, fortunately, everybody got out okay. She was able to grab the kids like baby books um, as she was on her way out the door and all of their hockey gear was in the garage. But she is a crafter, like you and I are crafters, and she lost everything. So I had just reached out to some companies, put it out on my blog, reached out to some more, at the time, more popular crafters, um, and just asked them, like, hey, if you have anything you can give, if you have anything you can spare, like, she's lost all of her crafty stuff. And I know for me, because this is my outlet, this is my stress relief, like, I would just be devastated if I didn't have any of my crafty things. And of course, as usual, this community just totally stepped up and blew me away. Um, I had so many things that people sent me. I tried to keep a running list so I could send thank you cards. And um, like, it was just, it was so overwhelming. Everybody was so wonderful. And, but during this time, like she, <laughs> she calls Brad um, to be like, hey, my apartment burned down last night and the boys and I are sitting on the curb while the fire department is putting out our apartment and he was like oh my gosh that's super unfortunate once he answered the phone because he didn't answer like he didn't even call her back until like the following morning and then he didn't even come out there like he didn't even come to her apartment he didn't I was like dude <laughs> This is a red flag. Like if you, your place of living burns to the ground and you're out there with the red cross getting underwear and toothbrush and your person can't be bothered to come out there, like that's a red flag. That's a problem. Um, so then after him, there was, um, who was it? Now, mind you, this is like 20 years worth of dating, by the way. I don't mean to make it sound like she's just been dating a slew of people um, for very short periods of time. These were all long-term relationships. Um, the last one, I think we're going to call him... We're going to call him just Dude. Just Dude. That's what we're going to go with. He doesn't even earn a name. So, Dude um, and her uh, worked for the same city but didn't work in the same building and he had kind of been um kind of like knocking at her door for for quite a bit of time while she was dating 
um, other people and wasn't available, but he was always, su he wasn't like pushy or anything, but he was always like super nice, like would send her happy Mother's Day texts and, you know, things like that. And so it just kind of naturally progressed from a friendship to them not seeing each other, um, which was all great and wonderful and good until like basically she found out he was just a huge liar. Like years ago, I dated a, uh, what I call a chameleon. I dated this man who um, he was like super funny and we were all into the same things and we hung out and had all these things in common. And then when it like when we broke up, it turned out that that wasn't true. Like he was only into those things because I was into those things. And then the next girl that he dated, he was into her things. And so you kind of have to like mourn the loss of this person who didn't really exist um, because you didn't know that it was all a show. That's how dude was. And he was like talking to other women and Facebook messaging them and then lying to her face and then like borrowing money off of her and never like paying it back. It was all just very shady. It was all just very shady. So after dude, like she's pretty much like, nope, done dating. I'm good. Thanks. She, a few years after that, she goes on a Catholic retreat um, with her sister and her mom. And while she's down there, um, you know, at this retreat where there's a bunch of talks and, you know, uh, different Bible studies and things like that. She, they meet this guy and his brother who were also there on the retreat. And it's not anything, it's totally platonic. Like just making conversation, her, you know, they just happen to be by each other's tables and things like that. And so while she um, is down there, uh, you know, they kind of make friends and they have dinner together like as a group. And then when they were getting ready to leave, um, she was going to, they had like, um, I think it was like St. Christopher medals um, and St. Michael. And she was picking up some for some of the guys at work that she knew would appreciate them. Um, and so she was waiting to have them blessed by the priest so that she could take them back. Well, in conversation now... Um, with him, with this new guy, his name is John, um, she finds out that he's a cop, which is so funny because, you know, like, what are the chances that you are going to, as a dispatcher, you're going to meet somebody who is in your same, like, kind of field of work at this retreat that's not even, you know, anywhere near your house. Um, and she was like, well, I would have got you one if I had known. And he was like, no, no, like, it's fine, whatever. Well, they end up exchanging phone numbers and becoming friends. And then before you know it, like, that friendship blossoms into something else. But he lives in Pennsylvania. We live in Ohio. So for literally, like, the last three or four years, they have been driving back and forth to other states to see each other. Um, and fortunately... John recently retired, so now he can move, like, because Ann just still working, can move to Cleveland um, so that they can be together. And um, last weekend, this just this past weekend, was their wedding. Um, so, like, just so happy for her. She finally found somebody who is wonderful and is good to her and is good to her boys and is just fantastic and he's just a really good person like outside of you know being a good husband or boyfriend or whatever he's just a super good person he's super involved um in his church and um yeah just wonderful guy could not be more happy for her so this card is how we got on this long-winded topic um this card is for her wedding um, and so I wanted to, watercolor does take a little bit longer, but I do think that is particularly beautiful medium. And so I wanted to make her something, um, first of all, because you always know your crafty friends will appreciate your crafty efforts more than anybody else. Like there's nothing worse than making a card for somebody and handing it to them and them opening it, glancing at it and being like, okay, thanks, bye. And then pitching it in the trash. Like two hours of my life is in that can. Like, dude, you can't just throw away a handmade card. It's horrific. And if you're going to do that, at least wait until I'm out the door. But like I knew she would appreciate it. 
And so I wanted her to have something that she um, could keep. So that is how I ended up with the watercoloring. Plus this framed anemone. You guys know I love florals. Like this really just spoke to me and kind of drew me in. Um, big bold florals. I'm here for it. I, I mean, anytime, really, night or day, I'm here for the big bold florals. Um, and I <laughs> like things framed in. I know not everybody does, and that's totally cool. If you chose to use this image, you could absolutely ink up the flowers and then just use a baby wipe to wipe away the lines so that you didn't stamp the lines. Um, or you could use it as like I have done here where I've stamped it in the no line coloring and then you could just color, like you could paint over the lines um, and kind of make them disappear that way. But I love a framed image. I am here for it. Um, so then afterward, I'm going to show you how I ended up framing it in since I did stamp in the no line coloring ink. Um, but yeah, her wedding was the ceremony I thought was closed, but then it ended up because of COVID. I thought it was closed, but then it ended up being up open. But by that time, like we would have had to have made arrangements for peanut and we didn't really have time to do that. So we ended up going to her little, it was like a cute little reception that they were having at the hotel um, downtown. And it was just kind of like open bar with drinks. And so we stopped in and got to see them. And then Eric and I had our own little like date night after we left there. Here doing the same thing with the detail on the leaves, just going back in and kind of following the guidelines that Emily has drawn in there for us. At this point, pretty much everything is dry um, outside of the little lines that I just put right back in there. Uh, but I was super happy with the way that it came out. I loved the colors. Um, I just think it's super bold and vibrant and very uh, fall-ish. So now that all of the painting is done, I'm going to go in with my T-square ruler and a pen. Now, my the, all the ones I have are Copic safe just because I use Copics more often. But you could really use anything that you wanted as long as it wasn't water-based. Um, and then I'm just going to use my ruler to go back over those lines and outline them in black because that's also what I'm going to do my sentiment in. So just going to go through those. Here's that Mr. and Mrs. die I was telling you about that I'm going to use in combination with the framed anemones. Um, congrats. Um, and then I'm just going to stamp them in black on white. This is Nina. This is not, uh, the watercolor cardstock. I didn't really feel like it needed to be on the watercolor cardstock. If you're a stickler about your colors matching, your cardstock colors matching, obviously feel free to stamp them, but I thought I would get a smoother result on the Nina. And the color wasn't so far off that it bothered me, mostly because of how I placed the sentiment. Um, a lot of it is over top of the painting, so it isn't like an obvious contrast. I'm going to use the matching dies to go ahead and cut these out. Um, and I just hold them in place with purple tape. Um, so far, I mean, I just, <laughs> when I use it right off the roll, I sometimes have a little bit of issues. But for the most part, once it's used once, I'm fine with it. And then I just have them kind of like stuck to the side of my desk. So I reuse them multiple times. Once I had everything... Um, cut out. I did play around with it off camera for quite a bit to figure out where I wanted to put my sentiments. This ended up making the most sense to me, even though it covered up some of the painting. Um, I just didn't like it up top. It just didn't, uh, I, I didn't like it. So all of these got popped up on foam, um, just the regular scotch foam tape, and then adhered to the card. I did not put any sparkle on here because it would have moved my pigment around, um, but I'm still happy with the way the card came out. So this is it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you learned a little bit about watercolor paper and had a little bit of story time, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.